Okay, hi YouTube. I'm coming on because I wanted to do Ashanti's two month update pretty much and there's a lot a lot a lot to cover so um before I get to her update I wanted to share something that I hadn't shared with anybody well and shared with anyone except for my trying to conceive Facebook page and even on there I was very vague about what was happening but pretty much two days after Ashanti and I were uh, released from the hospital I got a call from the uh this uh, specialist because Ashanti's newborn screening, which is an optional screening in some states, but in California, it's mandatory now. Well, her newborn screen had come back positive for a condition known as gluteric acidemia type one. It's a genetic, genetic condition where a baby's body or it, you know, it falls into adulthood too. <clears throat> where her body if she has it would not be able to process protein in certain enzymes and because her body couldn't process those enzymes um it would go to her brain and cause seizures and the seizures could cause uh slowing down in her motor skills and long story short she could end up with developmental disabilities and unless she was put on a special diet before the seizures hit before um the gluteric acidemia which they call ga1 ga the number one um before the ga1 hits they can screen for it of course with a newborn screen and put the baby on a diet before uh, the baby's body starts to process enzymes like before you pretty much start feeding the baby table food so if Ashanti has it, she cannot be on baby food. She cannot be on, like, you know, the table food. She can't do it. She has to be on a special diet. And so they called me two days later and said to bring her in right away to have a, a diagnostic test done for GA1. And it was really scary because we were just two days out of the hospital on postpartum, pretty much bleeding everywhere. That's dramatic, but that's what's happening. And I'm leaking milk everywhere, and I'm... I was highly, highly, highly emotional already just from having a baby, from being infertile and having a baby finally and all that. And so I felt like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? So like I said, I posted vaguely about what happened on my trying to conceive Facebook page. I did not post about it at all on my personal Facebook page because I just don't like it's, it just felt too personal to share. And, um, so they said to bring her in right away because the earlier they catch it, blah, 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 it's easier for them to treat it. I get that, but they don't understand the emotional side. No one asks, you know, did this baby, you know. Anyway, so I did my research and found that GA1 mostly affects children of Amish background and it's genetic, meaning both parents have to have it. There's a, uh, there's a GA2 that's not genetic, but they were saying she has GA1. So if she has it, um, her dad and I would have to go get DNA tested. We have to go anyway to get DNA tested, and for at the children's hospital, and then um, oh, it's the children's hospital's metabolic clinic. Like it's a special clinic for children with metabolic disorders, which GA one is an acid disorder. I think it's an, an amino acid disorder, but they clump it all and just to call it metabolic. So we would have to go. We have to go. Um, anywho, oh God. so GA one. I ended up not taking Ashanti until the second week of February, and so we had her. They call me January 5th, I believe. I didn't take her until February, like, 15th, which is bad. But I, I could not handle what was happening. And, you know. So, anyway, we took her. They had to take her blood. And they took her urine. And taking the urine was very tricky. Not just because she's a baby, but also because she's a girl. That was a process. And um, the place was so crowded. It was, like, a two-hour wait to get back there. It was a blood blood place the lab and then once we got back there was like another hour and a half to just get the test itself done so anyway they took her blood and urine i'm following my list here my little list um they took her blood and urine and of course the clinic had called me and said once we t uh, once i give them the sample the lab sends it over it takes two weeks and then they'll call me with the results well i got called with the results last week friday and 
everything came back completely normal. She's healthy. She does not have GA1. Her blood came back normal. The urine came back as a pattern that does not consist of GA1. Glutaric acidemia uh, type 1. And I have to go, we have to go in April to do a DNA test on her through the children's metabolic, this whatever place, so that they can make sure she really doesn't have it. But at this point, her screening, her second diagnostic test came back negative. So she does not have it. The DNA test is just precautionary because she tested positive for uh, the GA1 in the first place. <sighs> I prayed so hard for her because, like, I cannot imagine not feeding my baby table food one day. And, I, you know, during the time between taking her for the test and wallowing in the, you know, the scariness of it, I would go to the store and I'd see baby food and I'm like, Shanti might not ever be able to eat this stuff. And she might, so just, anyway, fears put to rest. It's fine. So, let's see. Um, as for me, I have my six-week checkup. Was it before? Yeah, I had my six-week checkup, and I noticed there was something wrong with me, and I had been ignoring it, but ever since I was released from the hospital, my feet and legs were swollen. Swollen, 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 swollen. And then they went down three weeks postpartum, and then by five or five weeks postpartum, they ballooned back up, but they ballooned back up so bad, I couldn't walk, and it was just like, my feet looked like water balloons. And when I would sit, the water would rush up to my leg and well, if I had to sit with my legs up. And if I would stand up or sit with my feet propped to the floor, my my uh, feet would feel, feel fluid. So um, after my six-week checkup, my OB at the appointment said everything was fine. That's normal. I went to the ER. They said it's not normal. And they ch gave me an ultrasound on my legs to check for blood clots for DVT, deep vein thrombosis, which I guess you could get after giving birth. And the ultrasound came back normal. I don't have any clots in my legs. It's just I'm retaining fluid. And um, <clears throat> I noticed, too, when I went to my six-week checkup, I was 40 pounds over what I thought I should be. So I freaked out. And again, my OB had just reassured me that retaining fluid after giving birth is completely normal. Yada, yada, yada. But it was 40 pounds over what, you know, it should have been. So I felt like it was all my fault because I'd been eating crappy anyway. But um, at the ER, uh, the doctor I saw, actually they ran blood test, urine test, and, oh yeah, and even ultrasound. And everything came back normal. It's just I was retaining fluid. So um, they gave me a water pill. And it was called Lasix. L A S. L-A-S-I-X. And so um, that's a harsh water pill, too. You really shouldn't take it unless you need it. But anyway, um, they gave me a water pill. And I went to WIC last week. So it had been a week and a half since I'd been on Lasix. And I was down 40 pounds. So what happened, and I'm really actually, like, upset with my OB for not catching this, is I was 40 pounds overweight because of water, fluid. So now I'm back to where I should be. I'm back down to my pre-pregnancy weight anyway. And my feet are still kind of still swollen. My left leg is, my left foot and leg are worse than the right foot and leg, which is not good. So I need to talk to my general practitioner and all that. But I'm really glad that most of that fluid got out because that's, that's awful. Like 40 pounds worth of fluid in your body is not excess, excess fluid. It's not a good thing. And I saw the Lasix. Because you cannot be on that, it takes away your potassium. So, yeah. And at my six week appointment, I was also placed on birth control, but um, five weeks postpartum, which was the beginning of February, I started having egg white cervical mucus, cramping, and that lasted for about two, three days. And I noticed specifically on the 6th of February that it was like I was having like discharge anything. Every and everything, and then the next day, the seventh, it went away. So I was like, if I get my period in two weeks, like that's ovulation. And on the twentieth, lo and behold, yes, 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 I started my period. So I ovulated on my own, yay! But I had uh, been given the pill on the fifteenth, and I started the pill not knowing I had ovulated. I started the pill on the twenty second, 
and got my period the 20th. Oh, no, no. I started the pill on the 15th and I got my period the 20th. So um, I just kept taking the pill. I didn't stop it. That would just make things worse. And so now um, I'm not even halfway through the pill. It's a, what do they call it? Nor no, I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. I really am not paying attention. But it's a pill I could take because da, 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 I'm still breastfeeding and pumping and all that. And um, because the baby, I pump, I breastfeed, and I use formula. But the baby had, oh, this is going back to, um, in January, I had her on soy formula because I noticed that she was having a hard time. <coughs> she was having a hard time on regular formula. I thought she had lactose intolerance. Well, she's allergic to soy, and um, I get my formula from WIC. I was getting formula from WIC, and they only give out Infamil, and she was having the hardest time on Infamil, anything regular. So I had them give me Infamil Pro Sobe, which is just soy. Her face pretty much um, became like leather. Her face, like, she broke out. Her breakout was so bad. Her face was just, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's like really sad, but her, she has a soy allergy. And so she was on that formula for two weeks before we figured it out. I took her off of it and put her onto Similac Sensitive. And her rash cleared up on her face. She's fine now. But now she has eczema. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. So now she has eczema. And that's um, why I'm. Back to breastfeeding because it's just easier for her to um for her body to handle it handle um eating her whatever she's just sensitive so breastfeeding soy allergy um, eczema eczema is pretty bad um not as bad as it could be i use aveno baby eczema aveno baby eczema wash and i use all free and clear and all baby and then dress but now i'm sticking to all free and clear for now and then i can move around to drift and move her back to drift because that's what she was on in the first place and that and she seems to be doing fine with the all free and clear um we went to wick like i said and um they took me off of formula they don't give me formula from wick anymore because she can't handle it they will not give me similac so that's fine i'll just buy it myself whatever and um they weighed her, and Ashanti, as of last week, Thursday, weighs 9 pounds and 12 ounces. And she has another appointment coming up with her pediatrician on the 8th, where she's going to get her two-month shots. And I want to know how much she weighs, because I think she's 10 pounds by now. And she's already in size 6 to 9-month onesies. Yeah, she's not fat. She's just very long. I am. Very, very long. And her dad and I are both, I'm almost six feet tall, and he's six feet tall. And so that's just why she's very long. Because if she could stand up, she'd be tall, like her parents. Um, and finally, with this update, I just want to say, I'm going to join a gym. I need to uh, do a membership. I believe I'm going to do 24-hour fitness. I will see. Um... I want to, I really want to do family fitness, but right now I don't have my own car and that's turning into a whole big old issue because I have a car. It's broken down. It's been broken down since July. I've not had any money to fix it. It's just been a debacle. My keys got locked in the car and someone broke into the car and stole the keys and blah, 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 blah. So now I need to buy a new car and that's going to be happening within the next three months so that I can be more consistent with the gym thing. Um, and I want to start taking the baby out. It has not been warm enough to take the baby out at all. So it's just like, oh my, oh my. So the weather's just not been very, um, like, there's no way I can take a baby out. Especially an infant, because she's not a newborn anymore. I can't take her out until it gets warmer, which won't be until probably May. And in May as well, Ashanti has a little bit of socializing to do. She's going to go meet her, she should be going to go meet her dad's mom which is her grandma and um it's kind of complicated but that's his mom and she should be going to go meet her dad's side of the family she hasn't met her dad yet he's not really um into the whole baby thing so it's just kind of this it's 
been an, an annoyance. So, um, yes, if I could take the baby out, it would be fine to be able to lose weight faster. But because she needs to stay inside, oh, and she gets overstimulated really easily. So, not too. I need to probably go on walks by myself, but then I need a babysitter, and yeah. So, I'm going to join a gym, probably go at night when she's sleeping, because 24-hour fitness is open, you know, 24 hours. So, yeah, uh, that's the update. Like, nothing really new uh, with her. Um, She's not going to be in this update. She's with my mom right now, so it's kind of like my one chance to do this video that's why i've been going weeks and weeks because it's just like she's all encompassing i have to take care of her and my attention has to be 100 percent on her or else you know nothing she's just it becomes harder if i'm focused on something else and i'm taking care of her she becomes very fussy so it just makes more sense to do my update now while she's being preoccupied and i get it done in one sitting so um yeah, like I said, um, Shanti's is her two-month update. Officially, tomorrow she'll be nine weeks old. Um, she's six to nine month onesies is crazy, um, and she's been in six to nine month onesies since last week ish. So yeah, um, and she's in size one diapers, but I think she needs size two now. Hmm. So yeah, um, yeah, I think I covered all the topics. So. I hope everything's going good with you. Anyone out there that's tra still trying to conceive, I'm sending baby dust. Anyone out there pregnant who just found out they're pregnant in the last month, congratulations. And sending baby dust always. And positive pregnancy vibes because it's hard. And thanks for watching.